If I take the fish out of the water and lay him on the bank, you come back later and the fish has perished. And so if you finally, if I take the star out of the sky, it is a falling star and the star ceases to exist. And if you take me away from my God, I can't exist because he's the vine and I am the branches. And if I ever take myself apart from the vine, then I'll be withered away and cast away because I must stay connected to that which I came from in order for myself to live. Somebody shout amen. Creating something new in your life. I hear people all the time, I need a change. I need a change. I need something different. So a lot of times we change our relationships. A lot of times people change geography. People change locations. We got people think they need change so bad they'll change a husband or change a wife. They'll, they'll change anything. I just need a change. Not understanding that the power of change is in the words you speak. You can live in the same place and turn your whole world around if you know what to say. Your body can be frail and you can bring it strength if you know how to use words. A relationship that is on the verge of death and destruction can be raised to affection and passion with the power of words. I can destroy my marriage before midnight with my mouth. I could restore a broken one tonight with my mouth just by learning what to say, when to say it, and how to say it, and letting God use my tongue as an instrument to put something in the atmosphere that can change my world. Amen. People don't see the power of words like that because we know... Can I tell you something? I could read you some scriptures that are downright scary. Jesus even put it this way. He said, by every idle word, you will be judged. I mean, and we all just jabber and just, just talk to be talking, to be saying stuff. But you got to understand when words are spirit, they are eternal. Remember, words are spirit. They do not occupy time, space, or matter. Jesus put, said this. He said, heaven and earth, everything's going to disappear. He said, but my word ain't going anywhere. His word is eternal. It's unchanging. That's why you can be mad and say something to your wife or to your husband and say something, and then 15 minutes later, the emotion is gone. But what you said, you're in counseling with the next eight years. Because you said something eternal out of a temporary emotion. You said something unchanging when your emotions are going to change. So we cannot let emotions steer. We cannot let our situation steer our words. We cannot let what we're going through. I have to be careful when I get real tired. When I get extremely tired and when I get extremely wore out is when I tend not to keep control of my words and I will maybe say some things that I wouldn't normally say or have less control over what I say. And I don't mean you can't be funny and I don't mean we all become the boringest people in the world, but you got to understand when you put something in the atmosphere, it has power. It's not a joke. There are people that are living in their words. <laughs> okay? So the words you put in you are usually the words that's coming out of you. I want you, what goes in usually comes out from the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. So you got to understand that your mouth pulls from the reservoir. This ain't in my notes. I'm right here. I'm just being prophetic. The, your heart is the reservoir from which your words flow. Okay? That's why the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence. Keep it clean. Keep it pure. Because if it becomes bitter, bitter words come out. And out of your heart come the issues of life. So people have got bitterness all in their life and they got bitter issues in their family and bitter issues with their husband and bitter issues with them and their kids and they don't understand why. It's because it got in you and whatever you get in you, you create around you after a certain amount of time. You get somebody with drama in them, then you put them in a room, they will create drama. Because out of the heart flow the issues of life. The devil did not create your issues. Your heart did. And I'm getting no claps on these kind of words. No clap. <laughs> 
Now, the first principle of creation is that God used words. Uh, verse 4, 6, 9, 11, 14, 16, 20, and 24 of Genesis 1. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and got over and over. He used his words to create what he wanted. Okay? Now, I have referred to this, but let me dig down a little deeper. When God wants something, he speaks to what holds it. And what holds it brings forth what he wants. The three illustrations I've always given you is God said, let the earth bring forth. What did God want? He wanted every herb that is for food. So everything you eat, every vegetable that you put in your mouth, it was already in the earth. He spoke to the earth and it brought forth what was already inside of it. God didn't go through a litany and say, let there be tomatoes. You know, let there be watermelon. Let there be cucumbers. Let there be garlic. Let there be cherry trees. He, didn't. he said, let the earth release what I've already put in you. He didn't go and name every type of sea creature. He said, let the waters bring forth. He didn't list the Milky Way and every galaxy in the universe. He said, let the heavens bring forth. Every planet, every star, every moon is already in the heavens. Now, heavens, release your potential. So God speaks to what holds it, and what holds it produces what he wants. This gets to us. When God wanted man, I'm not talking about maleness, when God wanted a kind, a mankind, the Bible, he said, he said, let us. He didn't talk to water. He didn't talk to the sky. He didn't talk to the ground. He said, let us make man in our image. And the Bible said, and male and female, he made them. So he made a kind and broke them down into two natures, male and female. So you got God. We were his potential. All of us, is this all right? Yeah. We're inside of him. So God, just like he spoke to the ground and what he spoke to gave, brought forth what he wanted, he wanted mankind and mankind was locked up in him. And since he had that potential inside of him, he started talking to himself and we came out. Now, let me tell you, that which is of God is spirit because God is spirit. Okay. Okay. God is spirit. So when God made us, he made us in spirit. You had some type of earthly existence before you, I mean heavenly existence before you entered earth. I can't explain that. The Bible doesn't give us a lot of information, but I got about three scriptures where the Bible says we were already created in Christ before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. So somehow or another, God made me. The Bible says all of my days were ordained before one of them came to be. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 3, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you and I had already ordained you to be a prophet. He said, I had a plan for you and you were, you were going to be long before you even got here. So you got to understand, you had some type of existence in heaven. And when you came into the earth, your mom and dad had to meet and share a milkshake at McDonald's and everything happened after that because this is not you. This is when God gave you a body. This is not the real you. This is just a house that you live in and it's temporary. Let me go to principle number two. You always know where something comes from because when it dies, it goes back to it. A chair made out of wood will always be wood. The wood is the source. The chair is the resource. I resourced it. But when I'm through with it, it just goes back to being wood. Okay? The Bible, the Bible, why do we read over a grave, ashes to ashes, dust to dust? Why do we do that? Because when God made a body, he reached into the dust of the earth. 
So whatever you came from, when you die, you go back to it. That's why they spread your ashes. Because that's what you came from. But the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Death in the earth is not death, it's separation. Because your body came from the earth, but your spirit came straight from God. So it goes back to where it came from. Some of y'all looking at me like a deer in headlights. It goes right back to where it came from. Okay? So here's what we've got to learn. You came from spirit. Put John 4 up there if you would, guys. John chapter 4. Look at this verse right here. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit. You cannot worship God unless you are a spirit. Anything can praise. That's why you can have a godless entertainer who's as corrupt as all get out, get up there and hold up his Emmy and say, well, I just want to give God praise. Anybody can praise. The Bible says that the leaves, that the uh, limbs of the trees clap their hands and praise God. The Bible says anything that hath breath praises God. The field is breathing. The trees are breathing. The grass is breathing. You're breathing. People are breathing. Everything that hath breath can praise God. But when it gets to worship, you can even look in a church service and you can see everybody praising. And when we go into worship, you can see people start to fade out. on Sunday. Why? Because you learn how to elevate your soul. And then when you leave after having elevated your soul, you walk out these doors and you prosper and you're in health just as your soul has prospered. Have you ever noticed that some people may seem more blessed than others? Are you giving but don't feel like you are receiving? In this series, Ron Carpenter shows you how to look deeper. He said, and this blessing will overtake you. Oh, come on, somebody. Deuteronomy 28 will pursue you and overtake you. See, you're chasing blessings. But Deuteronomy chapter 28 said, blessed shall ye be. And when you are blessed, he said, this blessing pursues you and overtakes you. In other words, the thing you're chasing turns turned around and chasing you. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. Hey guys, I appreciate so much you being on our telecast today and I hope that it's been blessing you. And uh, you know what? I was just been meditating on Psalm 1 lately. I remember my dad taught me Psalm 1 by my bedside. He would make me memorize scripture when it was bedtime. Crazy thing. You know, you're ready, you're tired, ready to go to bed. My daddy said, we're going to learn Psalm 1 tonight. You know, we're going to learn the third chapter of Philippians. I mean, it was, it was amazing as a child how much scripture my dad taught me. I'm forever grateful for a father like that. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of scornful. In other words, these are three environments you don't want to be around. But he delights himself in the law of the Lord, and in that law doth he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree. Man, nothing will move you. Let life bring what it can, but you shall be like a tree, not just any tree, planted by the rivers of water, always supplied by a source. And your leaf shall not wither. Your acts of kindness will never pass away, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. God will bless everything you put your hand to. Ah, may we be a part of that journey of helping you walk in godly counsel, of meditating on the, the law of the Lord day and night, where that promise to prosper you and cause stability in your life and always have a supply that nourishes your life. May that be consistent. I want to thank you for many of you, your weeks, months, years, and some even decades of support for Ron Carpenter Television. Uh, it is our endeavor, this whole team here, to serve Christ with excellence and do what we do at a high level. 
And because of that, we need and ask for your support. And many of you supported with your prayers, many of you supported financially with your encouraging remarks and tough times. So many ways where you've just sent cards, letters, and emails and uplifted and undergirded everything we do. And we're grateful to you. And uh, I just want to always have a time where I invite more people into our circle. There's more we want to do. We don't sell TV ads. We don't sell advertisements. We just believe that there's enough of God's people that want His Word to go everywhere. And maybe they like the way that it's spoken here. There's many great ministries that you can help <coughs> fund and sow seed. But we believe that right here we're trying to disciple and build people's faith in a powerful way. We'd like for you to be a part. Would you consider giving? We'd love for you to be a monthly partner and just determine in your heart with God what that amount would be, 50, 75, 100, whatever a month, and say, I'm gonna do this every month as a pledge to keep this on the air and keep the word going forth. Or maybe you just wanna give a one-time gift. Doesn't matter what you choose, this is our gift to you to say thank you. Number one, that you love the kingdom of God enough. Number two, that you respect enough how we try to present it here, that you would give and give sacrificially. Thank you for whatever it is that God has put in your heart to do, and thank you for your willingness to be a blessing. Now, let's get back to this word. Go to John 15. I got two more scriptures. Let me do, let me do this, and I'll land this plane. Two more scriptures. Go to John 15. I'm the vine. My father's the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Oh, did you see that? Every part of your life that's unfruitful? Okay, I'll just leave that with you. And every branch in me that does bear fruit, he prunes. So if it's not bearing fruit, he cuts it. And if it does bear fruit, he cuts it so that it may bear more. So guess what, Christians? You pruned if you do, you pruned if you don't. <laughs> you are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear of itself unless it abides in the vine. So whatever God creates must stay with its environment so that it can be sustained. If I pull the grass blade out of the ground, the brass grade turns brown and begins to die and wither away. If I take the fish out of the water and lay him on the bank, you come back later and the fish has perished because it has been removed from the, from the environment that created it. Oh, God. And so if you finally, if I take the star out of the sky, it is a falling star and the star ceases to exist. And if you take me away from my God, I can't exist because he's the vine and I am the branches. And if I ever take myself apart from the vine, then I'll be withered away and cast away because I must stay connected to that which I came from in order for myself to live. Somebody shout amen. amen. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Keep going right here. I'm going to read a few more scriptures. I'm divine. You, he's abiding me. About him bears much fruit. Without him you can do nothing. I'm looking for something. Go to verse, go to verse 7. If you abide, it is, if you abide in me and my words, shout words. Okay, I'll just stop with this one. This one's so good, I'll stop right here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever. Oh, no, 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 Pastor. No, that's too broad. No, no, no. If my word abides in you, Ask whatever. And what? It shall be done. When we go to God, I love suddenlies more than all of you. I hate process. I went to a hardware store the other day to get me a grill. I said, how much does it cost to assemble it? He said, $55. I said, put it together. <laughs> don't bring me a box. I don't like process. And the Bible, especially in the book of Mark, if you read the gospel of Mark, is full of, and suddenly, boy, I love sudden. Good God. Straightway the Lord, and immediately he got up. 
I love suddenly, straightway, and immediately. <laughs> but I think I referred about this about three weeks ago. 1 Corinthians 14 then talks about the working of miracles. God will get you to the same place. For some people, it is a, and straightway the Lord healed him. And for other people, it's a journey. I cannot tell you why one person came up here after 10 years of being a slave to drugs and God broke it and they got up and never had a desire for it again and never touched it again. And I see it all the time but also know other people that are clean and they went through a horrible process. Drying out, seeing green monkeys running up and down the wall and hallucinating and didn't know who they are and shaking all during the night, feeling like their body's turning inside out. I've seen it with my own eyes. Same end, different passage of getting there. Why, why, why? Because many times God is doing more for you in the process than the actual answer that you seek. The process sometimes does more than the actual miracle that he grants. And if God knows there is a deficiency in Ron Carpenter, it is God's responsibility to then take me through a process to make sure that I don't just get what I ask for in prayer, but that he has developed me in an area of my life that I will never be vulnerable in again. Am I making sense to anybody? I'm teaching you something. Stay with me. This is so rich right here. Okay? Most of the time when we come to God, the Bible says, you know, if you want of God, ask. You have not because you ask not. It's all right to ask. It's all right to ask big. Don't be delivered from low expectations. Your God is a big God. Ask big. Okay? When we pray, we pray for end results. You know, if we pray and, 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 the, and the lump was found in the breast, when we pray and ask God for healing, we want the lump to be gone. Okay? We, we, we go and we ask God for the oak tree, the one that takes 35, 40 years, the mighty trunk, the deep roots, the big lump. We, here's what we don't understand. If you pray for a mighty oak tree and God hands you an acorn, he answered your prayer. Because the oak tree is in the acorn. The peach orchard is inside the peach seed. The orange grove is inside the orange seed. Nobody goes and prays for seed. If you're sick and God gives you, you, you go to the word and, and, and God gives you this scripture, healing is the children's bread and he sent his word to heal your disease. And I could take you to Exodus 20. And none of the afflictions of the world shall ever come upon you or your household. If, if you ask God to heal you and he gave you those two scriptures, he just answered your prayer. Because his word is seed. Life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You can't eat the fruit of it unless it's a seed first. So the greatest thing you could do is pray and then go get in the word and let God give you a seed on it. Because if all you do is pray and then you don't go get in the word, then you have had a conversation with God and the most unintelligent one has done all the talking. So if God, you know, you, you've come from generations and generations and generations of poverty and you're just sick of it. You're just tired of it. You say, I want to break this curse in my bloodline. I want to be the change agent. Okay? 
and you take that prayer to God. God, use me. Let me break this in our life. Prosper me, oh God. Raise me up. Let my talents and my skills be maximized in the right environment. That's your prayer. Okay? When God turns around and gives you three or four words on that topic, God heard you and has answered you, and you now have everything you need. Watch this for the working of a miracle. Because the miracle is in the seed. The fruit is in the seed. And when you get the seed in your heart, then your heart's going to push it out and make it an issue. How many of you would like to leave an issue of debt and have an issue of many plentiful resources? Leave an issue of frailness and have an issue of strength. Ah, leave an issue of anxiety and fear and being scared all the time and have a posture of having a sound mind and being strong in God. <laughs> you know, I just want to end by calling you my friend. You say, I don't even like preachers, I don't like God, and I'm not saved. But well, you know what? The Bible says Jesus was the friend of sinners. So if you don't know him and your life is far away, you can know him right now. And I would love to lead you to him. We take one part of what we do and we try to disciple and encourage the, and build the faith of those who are believers. But I always want to end with saying there might be someone who's just stopped by for a moment and life has taken you to an empty place and you would love to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Say, I thank you, Jesus, for your love toward me. I accept your grace and mercy. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you died and were raised on the third day to purchase my salvation. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You just made the best decision you'll ever make. Call us, email us, write us, do something, but if you accepted Christ, you got to let us know. And we congratulate you on this wonderful, wonderful new journey you're about to embark on. Don't forget us here at Ron Carpenter Television and check us out every time you get a chance. Go to my website, roncarpenter.com. A lot of wonderful things there that you can be a part of as well. And I just want to tell you that we're so grateful that you've chosen to give your time to us. And until next time, may God richly bless your life. We come to church on Sunday. Why? Because you learn how to elevate your soul. And then when you leave after having elevated your soul, you walk out these doors and you prosper and you're in health just as your soul has prospered. Have you ever noticed that some people may seem more blessed than others? Are you giving but don't feel like you are receiving? In this series, Ron Carpenter shows you how to look deeper. He said, and this blessing will overtake you. Oh, come on, somebody. Deuteronomy 28 will pursue you and overtake you. See, you're chasing blessings. But Deuteronomy chapter 28 said, blessed shall ye be. And when you are blessed, he said, this blessing pursues you and overtakes you. In other words, the thing you're chasing turns turned around and chasing you. This series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call 1-888-259-8200. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen.